Hello. Good evening. How are you? Can you hear me? Hey, Bradley, how are you? Hey, Hen, Hen Salam, how are you? Can you hear me okay, guys? Let me know if you can hear me. Just put a one in the comments if you can hear me. You have your theory test Thursday morning, do you, tomorrow? I'm going to go through some questions and answers right now, so this, this may help you. I've also got a, a live lesson tomorrow morning. You good? I'm fine, thank you. And you can hear me, that's awesome. Brilliant. Stay, stay with me. I'll let a few more people join. So keep, put some comments in, double tap the screen, get some likes, um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll invite lots of more people to make this channel. And um, thank you. You can hear me very well. Brilliant. I'm a bit late, so I'll get started. Hi, Marie Bird. How are you? Hi, Theory with Eddie. How are you? Yeah, I'm a bit late, so I'll get started any minute now. And what we're doing is a question session. Um, you've not studied, well, you, you, I mean, I don't know what time you've got today, um, tonight to watch this, uh, tomorrow to watch my live. Um, you could go through a lot of my course tomorrow if that's what you think you've got time to do that. I'll pin it there for you. I don't have a HGV theory course yet, but I do have an L, um, a PCV theory course um, that will help you. So I could give you, my, you could buy, sign up for my PCV course and you could do, um, I can give you all the questions for LGV. That's what people are doing at the moment. Uh, so do, can I do has a perception? I'm not doing a lesson right now. I'm doing a revision session. So a revision session. So we, you're going to go over some, um, some questions. Uh, so anything you're struggling with and make sure you go on to, you go on to Yash Gear. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's awesome news. Oh my God, can you can you email me? Um, or send me a message with a little bit of a like, I passed today. Because um, I've seen your names pop up so much. It's lovely to hear that you've passed. Congratulations, well done you. Wait, give me one second, guys. I've just got to do something. Um, drag something off my screen. There you go. Brilliant, I'm coming back now. Let's get started. <laughs> Let's get started. Oh, hi Siobhan, how are you? Let me tell you who I am. Do you know me? Do you not know me? Let me know a bit later on than normal. Uh, my name is Annie. I'm an ADI. I'm a driving instructor. I'm a driving instructor trainer as well. And I help people to pass theory tests. I'm a theory test expert as well. So I became a theory test expert. I created the theory test course to help you guys pass your theory test. And um, because the pass rate is only 47%, it's really, really low. And I want to help with that. And I can help with that. Um, I've put into the course worksheets like these ones. I've put in video tutorials. I've put in facts lists. I've put in all the official questions from the DVSA. Um, case studies, anxiety techniques, all kinds of stuff is in this course to help you to pass your theory test. Um, you're guaranteed to have the most updated questions because the, the um, DVSA have given me them. So uh, you can have a look at my course as we're going through by clicking on this link. You can also click on this link to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All my question sessions will be going into my YouTube channel um, so you can watch them at other points. I go catch up on ones that you've missed as well. I'm just about to start this live any second. I've started it about five minutes ago. But I've not talked about anything yet. So you haven't missed anything. It's a question session. Um, so today we're going to go through the topic other types of vehicles. I'm going to go through every single other types of vehicles questions with you because there's only 22 of them. So that's what we're doing right now. 22 other type of vehicles questions. We'll do 11, have a break, and then do another, another 11, okay? So what you need to do is keep a note on how many you got right. Laura, hey, awesome. Um, keep a note of how many questions you get right. Uh, and then write down the ones you get wrong, really important, or screenshot the ones you get wrong so that you can learn from them. Don't be kicking yourself, just learn from it. Okay, cool. So first question, you're about to overtake a slow moving motorcyclist. Which sign will make you take special care? You might want to swipe right to take away all the comments and stuff. Okay, so which sign will make you take special care? Is it A, B, C or D? Pop your comments in now 
and let me know. Don't worry if you don't know. Imagine not being able to drive. That's a strange comment. Some people are not even 17 yet. <laughs> Imagine not being able to drive. Bushy, just, this is the first question. This is question number one. Uh, you're about to overtake a slow moving motorcyclist. Which sign would make you take special care? Got some A's, C's, D's. Think, of, think about the first um, the first sentence there. You're about to overtake a slow moving motorcyclist. And then think about the question. Which sign would make you take special care? That will help you if you really read the whole of the question properly. Okay, so I've got my clock in front of me. Let me get my clock. I think you've had enough time on that one. Should we reveal the answer? The answer, guys, is A. A is a triangle sign. It's a warning sign. All triangular shaped signs are warning signs. It's got a flag in it. What's it warning you about? Can somebody here help other people that don't know what it's warning you about? Side winds, brilliant. It's warning you about side winds. Why do you need to know there might, there's, there might be side winds as you're passing a slow moving motorcyclist? Why might you need to know that? Windy conditions, brilliant. Loads of great answers coming in, fantastic. Why do you need to know? Why do they, because the motorcyclist might be fall off or be blown in front of you. Okay, blow them off course, fantastic, well done. So now you know. They could wobble, says Jamie. Brilliant answer. OK, so next question. Question number two. You're waiting to turn right out of a minor road. So just picture yourself. You're waiting to turn right at the end of the road. It's clear to the left, but a lorry is coming from the right. Why should you wait, even if you've got enough time to go in front of the lorry? Why would you wait? A, anything overtaking the lorry will be hidden from view. B, the lorry could suddenly speed up. C, the lorry might be slowing down. D, the load on the lorry might be unstable. Guys, if you want to take away this other stuff on the screen, swipe your screen to the right, and then you can swipe back to the left to see the comments and put your own comment in. Some brilliant answers, but A, B, C or D. I'll leave it another 15 seconds. Meg Lauren, you say the answer is A, but you definitely go anyway. OK, let's see the right answer. The right, the right answer is A. You are absolutely right. So well done, Meg, on knowing the right answer to that. You would go anyway. Um, I saw somebody do that, didn't we, Eddie? Theory with Eddie is just downstairs. I'm in my office and we saw we saw that happen. We saw somebody go and they killed the motorcyclist. We were stuck in the hotel for a long time. Ambulances, police everywhere. Um, the motorcyclist died. So I'll just think about that when you're thinking about what, what decisions you would make. OK, I'm trying to help you here because I wouldn't want you to make that decision that that person who's now in prison is, is making, uh, did make. Question number three, you're following a long vehicle as it approaches a crossroads. What should you do if it signals left but moves out to the right? Get, close, uh, get closer in order to pass it quickly. Stay well back and give it room. Assume the signal is wrong and that it's turning right. The load on the lorry might be unstable. That doesn't make sense. Okay, what's the answer there? Is A, B, C or D? The safest one. Good answer that i love that answer the safest one another few seconds and i'll reveal the answer pin it there boy there's my course you can have a look at my course um why are you doing these answers and you can subscribe to my youtube channel as well so you're right you're absolutely right the safest answer is the correct answer stay aware well back and give it room why wouldn't we do the safest thing here guys why wouldn't we okay next question you're following a long vehicle approaching a crossroads what should you do if the driver signals right but moves closer 
to the left hand curb. Warn the driver about the wrong signal, wait behind the long vehicle, report the driver to the police, overtake on the right hand side. Absolutely Scott. Let's keep this a really, really, really great safe place for people to revise this evening. Okay, again, yeah, Bradley, you're absolutely right. Um, the right answer there is wait behind the long vehicle. Awesome, good answers. Some great answers coming in. If you want my, th my YouTube channel, click on this link that I've pinned there for you. Just click on the link and... Um, it you, you give you an option to sign up for my course and an option to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Next question. You're following a long vehicle. I've done that one. Next question. You're approaching a mini roundabout. What should you do if a long vehicle in front signals left but moves over to the right? Sound your horn, overtake on the left, follow the same course as the lorry, keep well back. What should you do? Ree Harris, that's awesome to hear. YouTube name, guys, just click on this link. It'll take you to my YouTube channel. It's Theory Test Practice Online. Theory Test Practice Online, but click on the link. It'll take you to it. Another 10 seconds, I'll reveal the answer. How are you doing? Sophie, awesome. Hi, Sunny, how are you? Okay, and... Yeah, the right answer there is absolutely right. It's keep well back. Why wouldn't you keep well back? We need to remember that these drivers of these big long vehicles have a really hard job, don't they? I mean, we we sometimes um, you struggle in a car to maneuver around. Imagine if that was a lorry. We need to keep keep it out of the way. We need to keep well back. Let them finish their turns. Um, dangerous for us if we if we don't. Next question. You're driving on a single carriageway road. Why should you keep well back while you're following a large vehicle? To give yourself acceleration space if you decide to overtake, to get the best view of the road ahead, to leave a gap in case the vehicle stops and rolls back, to offer other drivers a safe gap if they want to overtake you. So which one of those? Why should you keep well back from a large vehicle when you're following somebody? Give, give a long gap. A lot of you know the answer, but for those of you who don't, don't worry about it. You're learning all the time. Okay, so lots of B's, lots of C's coming in. And a few A's as well. Okay, so the correct answer there is B, to get the best view of the road ahead. If you're too close to a lorry, all you can see is the back of that lorry. All you can do, all you can respond to is what the lorry's doing. So if the lorry's braking you see the brake lights so you can start to brake but you don't know what's in front of the lorry what's around the lorry and you can't respond earlier um so you want to know what's happening ahead of you you don't want to only see what the lorry is doing do you okay i don't know what that that comment means okay so that's why um some people said to leave a gap in case the vehicle stops and rolls back that's not really going to happen as you're driving along okay so that's not the reason that you want to that you want to leave a long distance is to give the best view of the road ahead and i hope that makes sense views are restricted it's just just like if you put your hands close to your face all you can see is the back of your hand well you can't see very much more than the back of your hand when you move your hand further away from your face you can see your hand and all around the hand as well exactly the same as when you're driving behind a lorry you don't want to just see the lorry does that make sense double tap the screen guys if that makes a little bit of sense i'll pin the link to my course there for you if you want to have a look at it 
You're traveling behind a bus. What should you do if it pulls up at a bus stop? Accelerate past the bus. Look for pedestrians. Sound your horn. Pull in closely behind the bus. Which one? It makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. It makes sense when I explain. Good. That's what I'm here for, making theory easy for you. So which one of those should you do? Another five, ten seconds and I'll reveal the answer. Brilliant answers there. Okay, so you're travelling behind a bus. What should you do if it pulls up at a bus stop? And what you should do is watch out, look out for pedestrians. There could be pedestrians that get off the bus and they go in front of the bus and step out in front of you. Subscribed, awesome. There could be pedestrians that are running from across the road towards the bus and they're going to run out in front of you in case they miss the bus. So look out for the bus. Um, you wouldn't accelerate past the bus. You might go past the bus, but you wouldn't accelerate speed up past it um, and you wouldn't pull in closely behind it either does that make sense okay so you're following a lorry on a wet road you might want to swipe right so you can see the picture of the lorry you're following a lorry on a wet road what should you do when spray makes it difficult to see the road ahead drop back until you can see better put your headlights on full beam Keep close to the lorry, away from the sp spray. Speed up and overtake quickly. So pop your answers in now. I'll leave another 20 seconds or so. So was A, B or C, A, B, C or D. Which is the safest one? And most of you have said A, you're absolutely right. A, drop back until you can see see better, okay? And um, you shouldn't be close to a lorry anyway, but if it's wet road, the lorry can throw up water from the road and you just can't see very well at all. Uh, so, so you need to drop back until you can see better. You don't want to drive with that spray all over your windscreen the whole time. That would be really dangerous because you can't see very clearly. Question. You're leaving a safe gap as you follow a large vehicle. Awesome. What should you do if a car moves into that gap? What they mean is you, you've got a good distance between you and the, and the lorry in front of you. What if somebody overtakes you and moves into that gap? So now you're quite close to somebody and you work good far distance from somebody. Should you sound your horn? Should you drop back further? Should you flash your headlights or start to overtake? Which of those four should you do? Put your answers in the comments. What's the safest thing to do? You know what the safest thing to do, isn't it? Absolutely, guys, absolutely. The safest thing you can do is drop back further. Um, it doesn't really matter how, if you find that a little bit frustrating, you're better just keeping calm about it. If somebody moves into a safe gap that you've left, drop back even further, because if that person breaks and you're too close, you'll go into them. So there's no, there's no point in... Um, Realistically, flash your headlights. What would flashing your headlights do, though? In all seriousness, it, they wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't. They wouldn't move, would they? So flashing your headlights would be absolutely pointless. Nothing. Um, there's nothing you can do about it, really. Are you best thinking why have they done that? Um, okay. Good evening, Andrew. How are you? What should you do when you're approaching a bus that's signalling to move away from a bus stop? Go past it before it moves. Allow it to pull away if it's safe to do so. Flash your headlights as you approach. Signal left and wave the bus on. Guys, swipe to the right and it'll take away all the other stuff off the screen. 
There's nothing I can do about all the other bits and pieces. But if you swipe to the right, you can read all the com um, my slides and you can swipe back to the left again. Okay, so the right answer, what should you do when you're approaching a bus that's signalling to move away from a bus stop is allow it to pull away if it's safe to do so. The bus needs to get on with the journey. We need to let them do that, don't we? Does that make sense? It's obvious really, isn't it? We need to let the bus get on with their journey, but only if it's safe. Okay, so no harsh breaking or anything, just always if it's safe. Cool. Great answers, guys. What should you do if you want to overtake a long, slow moving vehicle on a busy road? A, follow it closely and keep moving out to see the road ahead. B, flash your headlights for the oncoming traffic to give way. C, stay behind until the driver waves you past. D, keep well back so you get a good view of the road ahead. Which one of those? Again, always the safest option. What should you do if you want to overtake a long, slow moving vehicle on a busy road? And the answer there is D, load if you got that one right. Well done. Give yourself a pass in the back if you got it right. If you didn't, then just say, okay, now I know that the answer is you should keep well back so you get a good view of the road ahead. Remember I said that to you before, if you're too close to something, all you can see is that thing in front of you. If you leave a bigger distance, you can see the thing in front of you and all around it as well. So this is a theory revision session. Um, you have done um, 11 questions so far. How many have you got right? How many have you got right so far? Let me know out of 11. I think it's 11. Yes, it is 11. How many have you got right? Is it 11 out of 11 or 4 out of 4 if you've only just joined me? How many did you get right so far? I've got 10, 6, 10, all of them one because you've only just joined and don't worry if you didn't get them all right don't worry um 11 out of 11 bushy awesome don't worry if you didn't if you got some wrong so long as you're learning two out of two so 100 percent uh, so don't worry if, only, if, you, if you're just learning and you get some wrong that's what you're here for I just joined, I didn't receive your invitation. I don't know what that means. Does it mean notification, you mean notification bell? Is that what it means? I don't, I don't know what you mean, sorry, sorry, I can't help you there. Okay, so have you got any questions for me? That's a question, why didn't I receive uh, an invitation? But I don't know what invitation you actually mean, I'm really sorry. Uh, well done everybody, yeah, I just joined but I got four right, yes, that's awesome. Well, I don't know what you. I don't know what you're talking about. The notification. I can't. I can't help you because I don't know what you mean. Sorry, I'm not very good on, on TikTok, so I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. Do you, Do you mean that you've clicked the notification bell and you weren't notified? Is, is that what you mean? And if you if, and if, and I can't answer the question anyway because I don't know. You need, to, you need to turn on notifications on Annie's page, it's the bell. Okay, so go to my TikTok page, um, um, follow me on TikTok, click on the notification bell, and then you will be notified when I'm live. Does that help? Can we do road signs? No, I'm doing, um, I'm doing um, this topic today, so I'll do road signs. And I'm all prepared for this topic, so I can't just change, I'm afraid. Um, cool. So I keep getting asked the same question, but I can't answer the question. I've said I can't answer it. I don't know why you weren't notified. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Okay, this is a theory revision session. Um, who's studying for the theory test? Let me know. Do I send paper copies? No, no paper copies are sent. That's why it's only $34.99. Um, there's no, it's all online. You can do everything you need. You get, you've, got every, you've got access to everything in my course straight away. Um, so 
let me tell you who I am. Let me tell you what my course is. And let's go into another 11 questions, shall we? There's loads of people studying for the theory test. That's awesome. That's why I'm here, guys, helping you and making theory easy for you. My name is Annie and I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. I've been a grade A instructor for about 10 years. I'm also an audits trainer. That means I train people to become driving instructors. And I'm also a theory test expert because so many people struggle and there isn't much help around for you, is there? You let me know what, what help do you have? Coley passed yours today. That's awesome. You don't need to be here then, do you, Coley? Uh, but share this live. Don't forget to share this live. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok. Follow me on YouTube. You can do that by clicking, clicking on this link. The course is the best thing I ever. I absolutely love it. Oh, my goodness. It's a real educational. Thank you so much. I have, um, that, that's, that's the aim. That's what I've tried to do. That's what I've aimed to do. Um, so I'll pin it there for people that are asking. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I, so this is the course they're talking about, theory test course. And I created it because the pass rate was is, is really low and I wanted to help so many people. I know I can help you. I'm a, like I say, I'm a driving instructor. I'm an instructor trainer. I spent three years at university doing primary school um, teaching. I'm a therapist as well. So all those skills are put into creating this course, finding out what you struggle with and then creating a course to help to, um, to, help, to help give you techniques and lessons and explanations to pass. So for, I put into it worksheets, video tutorials, fact lists, all the official questions, mock tests, mini mock tests, case studies, and then techniques for anxiety, techniques for hazard perception, techniques for questions, and also games. So everything's in there that you need. Uh, you're guaranteed to have the most updated questions because the DVSA have given me them and they will let me know when the questions are changed. Um, so you will learn everything in this course. You will pass. If you go all the way through this course, then you will pass your theory test. Let's get back to some questions, shall we? Who's passed the theory today? Libby Murray. Awesome. Congratulations. Leah, I'm sorry you failed last week. Um, Please have a look at this course. It's the price of one single one hour driving lesson. That's all this is. And you will be absolutely prepared to pass when you go all the way through it. Um, if you feel like you need a one to one, then please DM me and I'll put you on to Chris, um, who is awesome at delivering one to ones. OK, so today's topic is other types of vehicles. We've, there are 22 questions in other types of vehicles. I'm covering all of those tonight. We've done the first 11 and now we're doing the next 11 questions. Make sure you keep a note of how many you get right. And more importantly, make sure you write down the ones you get wrong. Make do, I, do you ever make mistakes now and then? What's that? What's that? Got to, what's that? What's that mean? Do I ever make mistakes about what? <laughs> That's a funny question. Um, I'm not a robot. <laughs> um, is the course helpful for practical? Well, yes, it is because you've got much better practical knowledge. But I do have a driving test course as well that goes through all the, uh, the whole of the driving syllabus. OK, so you have to DM me if you want to know more about that. OK, so first question in, the in section two, which vehicles are least likely to be affected by side wind? Cyclists, motorcyclists, high sided vehicles or cars? Yeah, you can watch it on you. This will be on YouTube to by tomorrow. You can subscribe by clicking on the link I've just pinned. JT, how frustrating. Why was that? I'm really sorry about that. I'm really, really sorry. That's whole, that's awful for you. Why was it? Okay, so what is the answer? Is it A, B, C or D? Now I'm going to give you a clue now because lots and lots of answers coming in. Read the question again. Which vehicles are least likely to be affected by side winds. And now let's answer that again. 
least like oh the exam doesn't turn up naughty i'm really sorry i hope they're giving you another date very very soon okay least likely which which vehicles are least likely to be affected by side winds now put the answer in again always make sure you read the questions um twice at least twice and make sure you read every single word dina that's awesome and the right answer there is cars cars are least likely to be affected by side winds cyclists and motorcyclists are more likely to be affected high-sided vehicles are more likely to be affected but cars are the least likely to be affected by side winds that makes sense what should you do as you approach this lorry? You might want to swipe right so you can see the screen um, without all the comments and other stuff that's on the screen. Then you can swipe back to the left again. Okay, so what should you do as you approach this lorry? Least mean less, yes. Well done. Uh, slow down and be prepared to wait. Make the lorry wait for you. Flash your headlights at the lorry. Move to the right hand side of the road. What do you think you should do? You know the answer. What is the safest option? Somebody's skitting my accent again. Yes, Sophie, the video will be on YouTube. When the questions change, they will let me know, then I will let you guys know. Okay, and the right answer there is A, slow down and be prepared to wait. Awesome, well done. It's the safest thing, isn't it? Let the lorry, let the, let the lorry driver do what he's trying and working really hard to do um, because he's very, very skilled at what he's doing, but he needs us to stay out of his way and let him do it. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yes, they worded differently in the real theory test. These are not the real, these are not the theory test questions. These are theory test practice questions. Theory test questions are... You only get those when you need theory test because it's a test of your knowledge. That makes sense? I hope so. It's the safest thing, says Bushy. Of course it is. You're following a large vehicle as it approaches a crossroads. What should you do if the driver signals to turn left? A. Overtake if you can leave plenty of room. B, overtake if there are no oncoming vehicles. C, wait for the driver to cancel his signal. D, wait for the vehicle to finish turning. I mean, it's another, what's the safest thing we can do? You know the answer here, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Wait for the vehicle to finish turning. We're not going to throw salary at him. We're going to wait for him to finish turning. And um, it's common sense. And, do you know, a lot of the questions are common sense. You have to make sure that you don't um, get the common sense easy ones wrong because you think it's harder than it is. OK, and then you have to make sure that you do actually re revise because not all of them are common sense. Some of them need knowledge and understanding. Cool. Why is it more difficult to overtake a large car than a lorry? So don't overthink this one. It's dead easy. Don't think too much, okay? So why is it more difficult to overtake a large vehicle than a car? It will take longer to overtake a large vehicle. A large vehicle will be fitted with a speed limiter. A large vehicle will have air brakes. It will take longer for a large vehicle to accelerate. Again, sometimes people get them wrong because they think they put too much thought into it and they don't think, <laughs> they don't think, oh, it's just obvious this one. And a lot of them, some of them are just obvious. And make sure you're reading it correctly. A couple of wrong answers coming in. And I think that's because, A for Abdi, I think that's because um, you're not reading it properly. Okay? So read the, read the ones properly. Make sure you read every single word. And the right answer there, most of you got it. It will take longer to overtake a large vehicle. Of course it will, won't it? 
Okay, so why is it more difficult to overtake a large vehicle than to overtake a car? It will take longer to overtake a large vehicle. You're the one that's overtaking. So make sure you read the question carefully so you're not, miss, you're not sort of answering the wrong thing. Okay, does that make sense? Next question. Thank you, Saruk one. Yeah. It's very windy. What should you do if you're behind a motorcyclist who's overtaking a high-sided vehicle? So it's very windy, okay? You've got that in your head. You're behind a motorcyclist and a motorcyclist is overtaking a high-sided vehicle. Overtake the motorcyclist immediately. Keep well back. Stay level with the motorcyclists. Keep close to the motorcyclist. Be for Barcelona. <laughs> okay, which one should you do? You know the answer. What's the safest option? Yeah, it is just obvious. Absolutely. Absolutely, you're right. It's just obvious. It's keep well back. Cool. Be for bravo. What should you do if, if there's a bus at a bus stop ahead of you? Flash your lights to warn the driver of your presence. Continue at the same speed, but sound your horn as a warning. Watch carefully for the sudden appearance of pedestrians. Pass the bus as quickly as you possibly can. Remember, guys, that some of these answers are really, really obvious. Some of them are. And that's how they want you to drive. It's not just how they want you to answer a theory test question, OK? It's what they want you to do when you're out there driving to keep you safe, to keep your passengers safe and alive, to, to keep other road users um, safe and alive. And you're right, the answer there is watch carefully for the sudden appearance of pedestrians. Make sense? Definitely C says Yazzie. Well done. Did you get it right? Double tap the screen if you got it right. Let me know. Let me see loads and loads of lights flying up the screen uh, now. And we'll move on to the next question, shall we? Yay, awesome. Will these type of questions be the exam? Yeah, what you need to think about is anything that we're covering right now is the same topics as they'll ask you in your test, in your real test. So they're asking you about bus stops and buses. So you will need to know all about how to drive around bus stops and buses, okay? They've asked you about lorries. Um, they want you to know how to drive and how to manage your driving around lorries. So it won't be the exact same question, but it'll be the same information they want you to know. So memorising questions and answers won't get you uh, anywhere, okay? Uh, what, um, but what you need to do is learn about the topic. Does that make sense? Let me know. And that's why I've created the course, to help you understand a topic, not just memorise questions. Next question, what should you be prepared to do in this situation? Sound your horn and continue. Slow down and give way. Re report the driver to the police. Squeeze through the gap. You know the answer. It's the safest possible thing. I'm loving all the hearts flying up the screen. I'm thinking of doing, it's reminding me, I'm thinking of doing a Valentine's Day event where I come on four times in the day. So I'll be on all day on Valentine's Day. Cool. The answer is slow down and give way. Of course we are. See what the information they really want you to know. So you, you might not get asked this exact question, but they want you to give lorries space, give them time. Um, you work in Valentine's Day. That the, the, oh, the, Well, I'll, I'll be on in the evenings as well. Um, they want you to give lorries space. They want you to give lorries time. They want you to understand that lorries don't take the same path as we do. If we turn there, a lorry might turn, a lorry might, to go to a new road, we can do that. A lorry might need to go right around to get into the same road. Does that make sense? 
okay? So lorries need a bigger turning circle than us cars. They want you to understand that. <laughs> Thanks, Siobhan. Uh, they want you to understand that lorries give off a lot of spray. You shouldn't be driving too close to them. So the question, that's what the questions will be about, but maybe not worded like this. Why should drivers be more careful on roads where trams operate? Thanks, Holly. Because trams don't have a horn. Because trams can't stop for cars. Because trams don't have lights. Because trams can't steer to avoid obstructions. So they want you to know about trams, don't they? They don't want you to be able to answer this question only. They want you to know all about trams. I'll pin the course here for you. And also you can click on there to subscribe to my YouTube channel because this live will go into my YouTube channel. So always remembering that some people might not even speak English very well, might not be from this country. Some people might never have seen a tram, but trams are on rails, aren't they? They're like trains, they're on rails, okay? So therefore, trams can't steer to avoid obstructions because they're going on a rail, they're on a rail, okay? So we've got to keep out of their way. We've got to be really careful where they are. Um, you will pass your theory of driving this year. Yes, Emma, yes, you will. Awesome, positive minding, positive mind. You're towing a caravan. Which is the safest type of rear view mirror to use? Is it an interior wide angle mirror? Is it an extended arm side mirror? Ordinary door mirrors, ordinary interior mirrors. Is it A, B, C or D? When you're towing a caravan, which is the best type of rear view mirror to use? Okay, I've got some A's and B's coming in. And who says B definitely? Farry, Farry645 says B definitely. Okay, and the answer is B, you're absolutely right. When you, your door mirrors um, don't stick out very much, do they? So if you look in your door mirror, all you would see is your caravan. So what an extended arm mirror is, is a mirror that's on a long arm. <laughs> so it's really wide out to the sides, okay? Really wide out to the sides so you can see past your caravan. Does that make sense? So this is a mirror on a long arm that sticks out so you can see past your, ca your, past your caravan. Put a yes if that makes sense, please. Lacey, just take your time, take it at your pace. Okay, take it at your pace. Don't let anybody rush you. It makes sense, says Holly. Yeah, awesome. Fantastic, guys. Well done. Thank you. Awesome we're all here together. Doing this in the... I know, what day do you do? Tuesday evening. You're driving in heavy traffic on a wet road. Which lights should you use if there's a lot of surface spray? Main beam headlights, side lights only, rear fog lights and dipped headlights. Which ones should you use? A lot of people are getting in touch with me saying the struggle with lights questions. And the advice I've got is to literally go to your car, go to a car and have a look at what all the lights do. Because these questions on lights are actually really easy once you understand the lights in a car. They're really, really easy. Um... Don't overthink them. That's the question. That's the um, that's the that's the hint that I'm going to give you. Great answers. If you know, if you get the answer right, give yourself a pat on the back. Say well done to me. If you didn't, then don't um, don't worry about it. Now you know. Um, and somebody has said, uh, what is the comment I got there? It's gone. I can't see it anymore. I think it was, you need to go and have a look at what dipped headlights are in your car or, or in your family's car, in your driving instructor car, in the car that you use to learn to drive. Have a look at what dipped headlights are because it's something you need to know. You need to know what they are. But um, 
Okay, cool. What should you do if you overtake a cyclist when it's very windy? Overtake very slowly. Keep close as you pass. Sound your horn repeatedly, allow extra room. Now, you know all the new highway code rules. This question should be even easier now that we know um, the hierarchy of road users who, who are gonna be really, really careful around. Um, so you know the answer to this question, don't you? You do. Put, put your answers in and double tap the screen if you, um, if you found this one really, really easy and obvious. You'd need to DM me for the for the HGV. I can help with HGV, um, but you need to, can you email me? That would be awesome. Brilliant answers. You're absolutely right. Of course, you're going to leave them allow extra room. That's what we'd be doing before the new highway code rules. That's what we'd certainly be doing now. Give give cyclists lots and lots of space. Why do we give them extra room? Because somebody put the answer in. Why should you? What should you do when you overtake a cyclist when it's very windy? Why should we allow extra room? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Someone put a, co a comment in for me. Thank you so much, Mum. Thank you, Hallie Mawahid, for joining me. Chance of the wind blowing them, of course. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it doesn't matter how you feel about going past cyclists. We, for wobble space, I like that. I like that, wobble space. Um, we, need to, um, we need to give them lots of room. We do not want them falling in front of us. That wouldn't be pleasant at all, would it? Okay, how many did you get right in that second um, section? I've just, I've just done another 11 questions. How many did you get? 100% says Kim. Well done. Tia says 10. So you got one wrong. So now you've found something you didn't know, which is great, isn't it? 11, 10, brilliant. Side wins, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. A lot of these questions um, in this topic are... Um, are quite simple but I want you to understand I don't want you to just know the answer to the question because it's not going to help when you do your real test okay like I say with lights you need to go out and have a look at them rather than having me tell you what the lights are my advice is to go out and have a look at lights because um, I'm not going to tell you what they are on here because uh, I want you to properly understand them and to do that you need to use them so go and look at lights Look at them. There's only a couple of lights in the car to understand. And once you understand what they are, you'll find all the lights questions incredibly easy. But you need to go and use them, um, look at them and not, 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 not ask it as a question. It, driving is a physical thing, isn't it? You need to do it. And while you're driving along, you need to know. Thank you, Nina. <laughs> while you're driving along, you need to know what lights to use and when. It's incredibly important. So go and have a look at them, okay? Go and have a look at them. Okay, have you got any questions? I'm not gonna talk about lights right now because I want you to properly understand them. And, um, and just talking about them is not gonna help you. You need to go out and look at them. Cool. Let's have a look and see. Oh. I'm there's my course pinned there. Chanel David, you passed your theory test. That's fantastic. How many hours or minutes should I study, says Bushy. Bushy, I would do a couple of 10-minute sections a day, but you join in a lot of my lives as well. Um, you've been through the course. I would, I would keep doing mock tests and make keep doing every mock test so you get 100% in it, okay? Get 100% in all your mock tests. Any questions you get wrong, Bush, this is Bushy because she's been through a whole course. Any questions you get wrong, write them down and find out why you got them wrong. With the caravan question, wouldn't, wouldn't the extended mirror hit people? Oh, it's a really good question. Um, um, but people will be keeping, you're... You, you, um, Caravan's quite wide, isn't it? So it would, um, you, people wouldn't be too close to you with ways because of your caravan anyway, okay? But you do have to be careful about hitting people with mirrors. Um, so that's, that's really good thought, well done. Yeah, 10 minutes, but you go through a mock test every day. What, every, every question you get wrong, find out why you got it wrong. 
that was my theory revision session uh, created for you guys to help you with your theory test. Um, so it's means this question. Do you think four months is long enough to finish theory? Yes, I do. Liam, four months is definitely long enough to finish the, 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 your, all your theory revision, okay? Um, I've done this to help you to make theory easy for you. This wasn't a lesson. This was a revision session to help to motivate you. Uh, my name is Annie. I'm, a, uh, I'm an ADI. I'm an audit registered instructor trainer. I'm a theory test expert. I'm here for you to help you pass your theory test. Um, I've created this course. Um, to help you because the pass rate is really low. Uh, there are worksheets, video tutorials, fact lists, official case studies, everything you need, absolutely everything you need to be 100% prepared to pass your theory test, um, including the most updated questions. Now, what you need to do is go to your course um, and practice a few questions on your own. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok, follow me on YouTube and uh, my next theory lesson is tomorrow at 8 a.m. My next theory revision session is Thursday at 6 p.m. Guys, the by guys by the course, it breaks everything down. Thank you, Clan Mentigo. Is that how you say it? Um, if the pass rate is so low, why don't they get rid of it? Get rid of the theory test. Then they want what they want you to do is have better theory knowledge, and they want people like me to help you with that. Okay, uh, and that's what I'm doing. So you need everything in the theory test is stuff that you need to know. Um, so they're not going to get rid of it. They, they want your knowledge to be better. So why do when do windscreen pillars cause a serious obstruction to your view? Can anybody answer that? So so you've got your windscreen in front of you. And then there's the, the metal bits that attach um, the frame, the windscreen, okay? And this cause a serious obstruction to your view because you've got to look around them to see what's there. So when would that happen? When would, when would you have to be looking around a, a, a windscreen pillar? Does anybody know? When would you have to be looking around it? It's a really good question. And you want to look at it when you ask, yeah. When you're turning out of a junction, fantastic answers, well done. So when you're next at a junction, just notice how the windscreen pillars block things. So there might be a pedestrian that's walking past and you can see the pedestrian, then they can, you can't see the pedestrian at all because they're hidden behind the windscreen pillar and then you can see them again as they walk in front of you. That means that you could drive out into that pedestrian because you can't see them. So they need you to know and properly understand that's at junctions and bends, Ray's Hussein, yeah? The, the windscreen pillars can cause a serious obstruction to your view, turning left or right, yeah? So you've got to move your head so you can see around the windscreen pillar. Let me know if that makes a bit of sense. Some great answers, guys. Well done for putting some answers in because some people don't understand that there are, that those pillars do cause an obstruction to your view. Some people don't understand that when you get something that's hanging, you know, what do you call them? Things that are hanging from your from your interior mirror, um, like little fluffy things or whatever, that they cause an obstruction to your view because they're hiding things that you can't see. Right, guys, I'm going to go and have my tea. Thanks for joining me. And this 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 recording will be on my TikTok. Uh, sorry, my YouTube channel by tomorrow, Fluffy Dice. That's the word. Uh, when those are hanging in front of you, they're cause an obstruction. You've got, you've got to look around them. Just think about it. Now put your hand in front of your face and you can't see everything. You have to look around your, ha your hand to see the full picture. Uh, good night, Siobhan. Thank you so much for your help. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Eddie. I really appreciate you guys for your and your help. Um, I'll see you again tomorrow morning. Good luck if you've got your theory very, very soon. Good luck with it. If you want help, if you want to know how I can help you, then please um, please sign up for my course because it will help you to pass. Um, and the link's not working. I'll just hang on a second till the link works. Have a lovely evening. I don't know what's that. Is it my internet or something? There you go. I pinned it there for you. Let me go with loads of likes. If you double tap the screen, give me loads of likes. That'd be awesome. Thank you, Lacey. That'd be really, really awesome. See, Ashwick, good luck for tomorrow. It's a pleasure, Doreen. See you, Bushy. You're doing great. Bye, guys. Oh, my God. Eddie has the same name as you. Yeah, he does. <laughs> oh, I have his name.